Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video. This presentation corresponds to a paper that will be presented at the ECCE conference in 2022 in Detroit, Michigan, in the USA. And the paper is entitled Investigation into a Magnetic Control of Hard Switching DC-DC Converters. The authors of this paper are myself, J. Marcos Alonso, Hector Chinchero, Girgis Abdel Messi, USC1, and Gigi Ewan. The authors are from the University of Oviedo in Spain, the University of Burgos also in Spain, and from the Harbin Institute of Technology in China. This is the outline of this presentation. We will see first an introduction, then the idea of magnetic control of the CDC converters. We will show a case study using the back converter with magnetic control. We will see some experimental results and finally the conclusions. We know that there are many control methods that have been studied and employed for controlling DC-DC converters. We are showing here two schematics of the maybe the most popular ones, the voltage mode control here, in which we are measuring the output voltage and then acting on the duty cycle directory of the switch. So in this way, we can regulate the output voltage. Another very uh, common uh, control method is the current mode control in which we are also measuring the output voltage, but now we are acting indirectly on the duty cycle of the switch because we are comparing the current that is circulating through the switch with a given level coming out of the compensator and then generating using this flip-flop the finally the duty cycle of the switch this is also a very well known and there are many other and different uh, control methods that have been studied in the past, like the hysteretic control, T on control, T of control, V squared control, and so on. So uh, here in this presentation, in this world, what we are asking ourselves is how about using the inductance as control parameter? Is it possible? Is it worth doing? So we are going to investigate in this in this work. Since the inductance is a parameter of an inductor and an inductor is a magnetic device, we can call this um, potential control method as magnetic control of DC-DC converters. So the question here is if we have a DC-DC converter like the back converter that is shown here in this slide, what happens if we modify the inductance? And the answer can depend on the operation operating mode of the converter. If we operate the converter in continuous conduction mode, as shown here, then we have a DC level, we have the ripple of the current on the inductor, which never reaches zero. And therefore, if we change the inductance, what we are only doing is to change the peak-to-peak -peak ripple of the current. So the change in the inductor is not going to change the average current circulating into the output. We can change we, in this way the dynamic of the converter and this could be useful in some applications but we can not affect the output current and the output voltage of the converter. However, if we are operating in this continuous conduction mode, we can see that now the current is reaching zero before the end of the switching period. So if we change the inductance, then we are going to have different average uh, values of the current circulating through the, inductor, uh, through the inductance. And therefore, we have uh, different values of the output voltage. So the output voltage in this operating mode depends on the value of the inductance and this could make a possible control method of the converter. So let's look into this a little bit further. Here in this slide we are showing the schematics of the most common DC-DC converters the back converter, the boost converter, back and boost converter, the flyback and the forward converter. So we can see in this table here on the right 
the voltage gain of the converters when they operate in this discontinuous conduction mode and in continuous conduction mode. So in continuous conduction mode, we can see that the voltage, as we know, it depends only on the duty cycle and maybe on the turn ratio of the converters, like the flyback converter and forward converter. Uh, but in the case of the, volta the voltage gain in this continuous conduction mode, we can see these other expressions. And in all of them, we see that the output voltage depends on this factor here, Ln, which is the normalized value of the inductance and is given by this expression here, is the inductance divided by this factor are over two times the frequency, the switching frequency. So we can see then that the output voltage is dependent on the value of the inductance and therefore the inductance can be used as a control parameter of the output voltage. Here we are showing the equations that we have seen in the table before but in a graphical way. So, uh, for example, in this case, for the back converter, we are representing here the voltage ratio, VO over VI, the output voltage over the input voltage, as a function of the normalized inductance, Lm. And for different values of the duty cycle, so we can see that in these uh, curves here, we have a um, um, part in which the voltage changes is decreasing as we increase the value of the normalized inductance until a um, given value of the normalized inductance in which the voltage is constant and independent of the inductance. So this point here is the... Um, borderline uh, between the uh, discontinuous conduction mode here on the left and the continuous conduction mode here on the right. So here we are in CCM, continuous conduction mode, and the voltage remains constant and independent on the inductance. But in this other part here, in the discontinuous conduction mode of operation, we can see that the voltage can be controlled by changing the inductance. So, this is a way to control the output voltage. In the other converters, we have similar behavior, the boost converter here, the back boost converter, or even the flyback converter for a given value of the 10 ratio here. So finally, the conclusion, uh, once again, is that we can use the inductance as a control parameter of the output voltage. So now that we know that we can change the output voltage and control the output voltage of a DC-DC converter by changing the inductance of our inductor, the question that is raised now is how to implement a variable inductor. Here in this slide we are showing the two very common structure. One is the EE core structure in which we have our main winding here in this part of the EE core. And then we add two uh, bias windings on the outside uh, parts of the structure, on, the, on these other arms of the structure. So we are injecting a DC current through these um, auxiliary windings, and with this we can move the DC operating point of the BH curve of the magnetic material, and with this we modulate the permeability and then, therefore, we can change the effective value of the inductance seen from this winding here. Here we can see another possibility is the UU structure in which we are using U cores to do the implementation. In this case, we have the primary winding split in these two windings here. One is on this side and the other one is on this other side. And we have the bias winding here. So in this way, we can do exactly the same. We can modulate the permeability of the material and then have a variable inductance seen from these uh, windings uh, of the structure. We are not going to enter into more detail about these variable inductors. For further information, please take a look at the references shown in the um, reference section of the paper. 
So let's start now with our case study using the back converter. We have selected a back converter with an input voltage of 10 volts and an output voltage of 5 volts with an um, output current, maximum output current of 1 ampere. So here on the left we can see the characteristic of the voltage ratio, the output voltage over the input voltage as a function of the inductance in microhenries and for different values of the load resistance. The duty cycle is fixed at 0.4 and the switching frequency is fixed at 100 kHz. So rem remember that we are fixing the duty cycle and the switching frequency because we are only using the inductance as a control parameter in our converter. So the idea of the operation is assumed here we are measuring the output voltage with this uh, voltage divider here and sending this information into a error compensation and this error compensator is going to uh, control this current source, this transistor here is operating as a current source controlling the current, the DC current through the bias winding. So with this DC current through the bias winding we can control the actual value of the inductance and therefore indirectly controlling the output voltage of the converter. So now we are going to study this a little bit further in order to understand better the operation of our converter. Here we have the summary of the equations that rule the operation of the converter. The detailed information is available in the paper. Here we have the equivalent circuit of uh, the back converter operating in this continuous conduction mode. It's very easy to understand. Here is in the uh, time domain, the average circuit. Here we have in the Laplace domain. And then we have this response of the output voltage. We can obtain this response of the output voltage voltage versus the value of the inductance and then we can see that is a first order response with one pole given at this uh, value here of the angular frequency. Here are the equations related to the operation of the variable inductor. Here we are showing the uh, transfer function that provides the uh, bias current versus the control voltage. So IVS versus VCS, here is VC at this point here, and here is IV, the current circulating through the bias winding. So we can see that we have also a response, a first order response, with a pole that is given by this um, uh, angular frequency here. So uh, this is uh, really important because at the end the dynamic of our converter is also very much affected by the uh, characteristic of the variable inductor. So the, main, the dynamics of the variable inductor is given mainly by the inductance of the bias winding, also together with the series resistance of the winding and also other parameters coming from the a bipolar transistor. Here is the output impedance of our uh, bipolar transistor that we are using here in this point. But as I have said, all the uh, information is included in the paper with more detail. So finally, here we can see in the block diagram in the S domain of our converter. So we have the compensator, we have the response of the bias current through the inductor, um, as a function of the control voltage. Then we have this parameter here relating the inductance and the bias current. We are considering, as it is shown in the paper, we are considering that there is no dynamic in this behavior here. And then we have the response of the output voltage uh, versus the changes in the inductance. Finally, we are going to measure the output voltage with a um, given gain here and then comparing it with the uh, voltage reference and then send the error signal into our compensator. So this is the complete operation of our converter. So now we will see some details about the implementation of our prototype. Here we can see the variable inductor that we have developed. This variable inductor has been implemented with uh, the uh, components that are shown here with the different uh, values 
and here on this part we can see the um, characteristic of the inductance versus the DC bias current uh, injected into the auxiliary windings. The auxiliary windings we can see are on this part of the structure and here is the main winding. So when the um, bias current is almost zero then we have a value of 20 microhenries and then when we increase the uh, bias current then the inductance is decreasing until reaching a value here which is around something like 5.5 microhenries. As we have said in the previous slide is very important the value of the bias winding um, effective inductance and series resistance in this case these are the two uh, two values 1.2 millihenries and 6.2 ohms measured at 100 hertz because these uh, parameters here are related to the um, dynamics of our control method at the end because it's related with the dynamics of the variable inductor here are more details about the implementation of the converter. Here we have the values of different elements, the power switch, the diode, the transistor, bipolar transistor used in the driving circuit of the auxiliary windings and so on. So the first test that we did was in open loop operation. So without using this part here, just controlling directly with a DC voltage source the value of VC. So when we change the voltage in VC, when we increase in this voltage from 0.9 volts up to 1.4 volts, we are um, changing the bias current and therefore the DC output voltage, as we can see, can be a change also from something like 4.5 volts up to something like 5.6 volts. So and this is the control to output DC characteristic of our converter. In another experiment we have measured the um, dynamic response of our converter when we inject the control signal here uh, the VC signal and measuring the output voltage. Uh, we have uh, previously in the paper studied this behavior theoretically and we obtained this um, response here, the magnitude of the dynamic response and also the phase. And here are the experimental uh, responses obtained in the laboratory. So we have also the magnitude and the phase and we can see that the experimental results are pretty much the same as the theoretical ones. In a second step, we have designed a compensator, as we have seen before, including this circuit here. The parameters are shown here in this table. Here is the theoretical design. We can see the loop gain here in red, and then the experimental results. So we can see the loop gain magnitude here and the loop gain phase. And once again, we are getting a good uh, matching between the theoretical design and the experimental measurement. Here we are showing some um, waveforms of the operation of our converter. We are measuring the voltage here across the diode, the voltage applied to the filter of the converter. So here we can see the voltage and here is the current through the inductor at a given operating point and then here we have another operating point more deep into this continuous conduction mode of operation. And finally here we can see some of the measurements to test the closed loop dynamic response of our converter. So in this part here, we see how the converter responds to a load step from 5 ohm to 10 ohm. So here is the output voltage and here is the signal triggering the load resistance. So we can see how the, we have a change in the voltage, in the output voltage, but then it is recovering uh, the a previous level in a steady state so the uh, compensator is operating well and here we see a similar response but now for a voltage step from 8 volts to 11 volts so here is the input voltage changing and then we can see here the output voltage so again we have a transient and then we reach the 
uh, steady state value uh, compensating the, the error of the output voltage. So finally, the conclusions of our work, we are going to answer the questions that we have raised before. How about using the inductance as control parameter? Is it possible? The answer is yes. The inductance can be used to control and regulate the output of voltage or current of a DC-DC converter, provided that it operates in discontinuous conduction mode. And the second question, is it worth doing this? And the answers can be that it can be used as an additional parameter to improve the operation of the converter, to extend the operation range of the converter when some of parameters some of the parameters of our converter change. And other possibilities that could be investigated is that it can also be used to provide several regulated outputs with a minimum number of power switches and control circuits. So this can be interesting when we are looking for highly reliable converters. So here in this schematic here, we are showing how we can generate several outputs regulated and fully regulated using the inductances and using only one switch and one diode that are going to fix the square waveform here at a given value of the duty cycle and at a given value of the switching frequency. Well, this concludes my presentation today. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. You have here my email address. I am looking forward to hearing from you and goodbye now.